All right, thank y'all for coming. My name is Taylor Minkachi. I'm the mayor of Erath. Um, this is this is a great turnout. We uh, we expected five or ten people. We thought we'd have been the, the five, um, but thank y'all for coming. I took office in 2018. Um, 2019 was my first year. I went to the, Barry Toops and I went to this study. They said, "You else got these funds? State's paying for this study. We would check it out." Well. Mr. Stewart started talking, talking about demand and lack of resources. Barry was telling him about his idea of what he wanted to do. We tapped each other and said, this is what we need to do. So three years ago, started going to the Twin Parish Sports Meetings, public funds, using to support the community. And we had a, we had an itch and, and they and they said satisfied it. And this is what it is. So so excited for y'all to come out tonight. So excited for y'all to hear about this. This is going to be a great opportunity for the town to be around. This is going to be a great opportunity for the Acadiana region because this is going to be one of the only uh, in the Acadiana region. Closest thing will be New Orleans, Baton Rouge area. Um, so thank y'all for coming. Um, this will be informal, sort of, sort of, kind of. More information will come down the line as Wyndham and tell y'all, but we're very excited about this event. Mr. Wyndham Thank you, Mayor. Hello and welcome to the Acadiana Regional Seafood Hub, where we want you to turn Cajun flavor into Cajun value. This idea has, has come about through a series of developments over the years, starting with the shrimpers in Delphum, when we decided to open the docks so they could sell their shrimp directly to the public and they can make more money and the public gets a good price and things uh, took off from that point the public turned out and we learned not only the power of buying direct but the power and the demand for local seafood it's just incredible it's been incredible since we started and uh, it led to where we are now, and it led to other things along the way. Uh, we moved on to a farmer's market, and the Delcom Seafood and Farmer's Market became very successful for fishermen, for shrimpers, and for people who, who prepared food and sold food, and for crafters and, and, and people that, uh, that, that do art. We learned that there's so much talent in Acadiana, not only for, like we said, food, but for music, for art. So we wanted a way to tap into that talent. So going back to seafood, we saw that fishermen can earn more by doing what's called value-added products. Taking their product and packing it and freezing it and selling it at a premium price and getting more for their hard work. And from that, we decided, well, let's create a community brand where we can put that brand on there and it means quality and it means local product. So we came up with Vermilion Bay Sweet, being Vermilion Bay, of course, and Sweet being the shrimp being a white shrimp and having a slightly sweeter flavor. So we just developed this brand and it, just like the, the direct sales, it, it took off. So from there, we noticed that other shrimpers and other fishermen here wanted to do the same thing. We have Michelle Granger, Granger Seafood. She's way ahead of us. I'll be honest, she's way ahead of us. She's right there in Maurice, her and her husband, Big Al, were catching shrimp and selling it for years. And then they turned their home business into a processing, microprocessing center with cold storage. And now they have more value out of uh, what they do. And there are many others across the state and, and in this area. This, uh, Louisiana blue crab right there in Calpin. There's Big D's at Sippermoon Point. There's freshwater seafood in Laurelville with catfish. And then we have the Vietnamese community in Appleville. It's now the St. Andrew's Church. They 
not only do packing of seafood, but as you know, they, they prepare their uh, tremendous egg rolls and other fried shrimp and dishes that, uh, you know, have dreams about. But, it, but they're another group that are doing exactly the type of thing that we're trying to target. But there's other parts of the states like Homa and Galliano and Cutoff where there's a lot more fishermen than are here. And there's more of these microprocessors, these fishermen that catch and pack their own product. From shrimp to oysters to crabs to all kinds of fish. And these are not big operations. The, what we saw though is we don't have as much of that here. But it, it goes on all across the state so we figured it's time to step up our efforts at value-added products. This is nothing new. It's been done for many years in the agricultural sector. Simply bring in the agriculture. All you do is add some value to it by packing it and making it ready to go and ready to be sold. And you add to the, to the revenue that, that uh, you otherwise would make. The problem is when you start packing something for the consumer or for an institution, you know what you have to have. It has to be permitted. You have to have the Department of Health. If you're dealing with meat, you have to have the USDA. If you're going to sell it across state lines, you have to have the FDA. You have to have nutrition. All these things that make it difficult for someone in their home to be able to sell what, what they do. They can sell it at farmers markets, but to be able to sell it to grocery stores and restaurants, that's a hurdle. So this is what we want to do. We want to make it possible for those folks to get those products out into the larger market. And just think about from just what I see at our farmers market, that this has to be a tremendous benefit to our area, to our region, to be able to take all that talent and put it into the mainstream and into different market channels. So that's just the basics of why we're here. And before I move on, I want you to know who we are. Uh, I'm Wendell Barrett, and I'm the Port Director for the Twin Parish Port Commission. And we have some of our Port Commissioners here. Um, Mr. Curly Darquez is our Chairman. Marshall Broussard is not here, our vice chairman, he helped set up our speaker system. Also appointed by ERAC. Ms. Nara Crowley, our treasurer, appointed by the uh, parish of Iberia. Now Ms. Connie Longaday, as well, appointed by Iberia. We have Mr. Kelly Rogers, uh, appointed by ERAC. We have Mr. Mark Arsenal, appointed by the town of Delcom. We have Mr. David Dugoff, who's here, appointed by the town of Delta. We have Mr. Greg Tuchek, appointed, appointed by the uh, Parish of Vermillion. Jacob Landry, Parish of Vermillion. And Mr. Robbie Mayer, who's here, Parish of Vermillion. A lot of times when I get up here, I forget about my staff. They remind me that I forget about that fact. <laughs> so I'm going to call them out this time. So please be patient. And we've, uh, we've accumulated quite a crew, um, so it's not all me. Miss Tammy Garden, Community Relations. <laughs> Miss Monica Carrier, our Administrative Assistant. Ms. Brittany Gordon, not here tonight, market manager. Drake LeBlanc, our maintenance manager. Mr. Tim LeBeau, our boat launch steward. Suzanne Duga, our grant administrator. Someone is making me borrow a state dinner for that money. Okay, you need to. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> Ms. Patrice Doucette, our marketing agent. Ms. Janet Falk-Gonzalez, who's on the phone. She's in Beaumont. 
He's our research analyst. We have Ms. Laurel Blackerby, our nutritionist. We have Jordi Kukwa, our videographer and podcast editor. Mr. Hunter Romero is not here tonight, our, our podcast producer. And you can check out our podcast called Hold the Gravy. It's on Apple Podcasts and uh, many other podcast services. Uh, also not here, Mr. Tibor Renard, our doc master. And our newest staffer, Ms. Edie Castleman, our financial officer. I'd also like to recognize uh, Cong Congressman Clay Higgins' office, Mr. John Col Coltan. Our state representative, Lake Miguez, who's going to be here tonight. We're about a Iberia Parish Government Council, Mr. Marty Trahan. Marty? Thank you. Did I, did I see Larry walk in? Yes. Mr. Larry Richard, Parish President. Thank y'all for coming. Any other elected officials? Mr. Francis Plaisance. Mr. Francis Plaisance. Thank you. Ms. Allie Miller, we're making tourism. A seafood hub or a food hub is a multi-use facility. It will be located here on Highway 14 near the ballpark. It's a it, we're looking to have a commissary kitchen uh, to be rented by food producers, certified and permitted, retail storefront, drive-through window, classroom and demo space, cold storage, packing and shipping. We expect construction in 2023. I don't know if you can see it too well, but the square that's in red, out of this, it takes about half of this, would be right here, doctor's office is right here. Uh, this whole section is uh, owned by developer, Mr. Glenn Leche, uh, Glenn Leche Construction, and he wants to build this property out to, to a retail development. QSA, uh, you can see the ballpark right here. They have been preliminary approved to do some improvements to the ballpark, including turfing of infields and other areas and the reason that that's important is it's going to permit them to have tournaments year-round without turf fields once it rains the tournament is basically over so this will allow them to, to keep the tournaments going and attract more tournaments and it's one of the big things that uh, organizations look for when they do plan a tournament and this is uh, the trend now, and you'll see a lot of ballparks. You know, Iberia is doing it. Crowley is the big success story. They have a lot of development resulting from the improvements they made to, to their ballpark. So all of this is going to work together. Um, we have another business interested in connecting right up to us. So it's the start of somewhat of a, a strip mall type of facility, but we don't know yet what all is going to happen, but we have to start somewhere. The facility is for seafood producers, of course, fishermen, farmers, ranchers, growers, home-based businesses, we call them cottage businesses, people who do products in their home, chefs and cooks that might need the facility, restaurants, small retailers, grocers, and institution. Not only to use the facility, but as a sales point for those who do produce in the facility. All our, our partners that we are working with to bring this about, the town of Iraq, Familiar Economic Development Alliance, the USDA Agricultural Marketing Service, the USDA Agricultural Rural Development, uh, I'm sorry, 
So we, you'll hear us say rise, the word rise, and that's an agri, agri, uh, USDA acronym for um, Rural Innovation Stronger Economy. This is the grant uh, that is making this possible, and I'll explain that a little bit more further on. Uh, the Delta Regional Authority, we just received notice yesterday that we are receiving an additional 275000 to purchase property and elevate the property. Uh, Louisiana Sea Grant, Canyon Haven Marketplace, Glen Lange Construction, and Quality Sports Authority. So we're not doing this on our own, and it takes a community to make things happen. And now I'm happy to introduce Ms. Ann Fowler, our Executive Director for Me and Economic Development Alliance. I'll keep it short, so I'll be your favorite speaker of the night. Woo! Um, right? So, um, right around the time when Jeff and Meridian Institute were starting the seafood study, uh, we started talking to cattle men and women about food production. Um, and we started talking to QSA about changing their business model, and we started talking to Glenn Leger about developing his property, and all of those things pointed to this seafood hub as being a true catalyst uh, for entrepreneurial development, and that's something that we really care about. Um, a lot of people think about economic development as attracting in that big, employer and having you know that headline splashed across the front page but a lot of the work that we do is working with individual businesses producers farmers fishermen on their unique assets their unique business and helping them improve that to meet their own goals and so this kind of project can really be instrumental in helping you all do that the way that we plan to partner is walking you through those processes and helping you understand the resources that are available to you beyond this center. Because there's a lot of programs that the state offers that are offered locally, that are offered even nationally, that you haven't found out about yet. And we've done a poor job of making you understand what an important part of this economy you really are. So we wanna use this project to help change that and help you get the resources that you need to be successful. So we're really excited to be here. We're excited about what this looks like in the future. And, um, you know, let's cook some good food. Yeah. And next we have Dr. Jeff Stewart. And i got to tell you, when um, the, the port started to kind of recover from the storms in 05, Rita, and I, uh, Dr. Jeff Stewart uh, brought his uh, MBA classes to Delta, and they did about six marketing studies. On and those studies are etched in my mind probably forever. But it 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 was very expensive to do. It was free. <laughs> But we're very thankful to Dr. Jeff Stewart, and uh, he uh, recently, and he'll tell you about uh, the seafood studies that he's, he's done. He's doing the feasibility study for this project, actually, and uh, he's going to tell you all about it. So please welcome Dr. Jeff Stewart. Go, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Wendell. Um, and thank you all for being here this evening. I mean, this is phenomenal turnout for this type of event, and it's really indicative of your community and the, the thing that makes this place special. So Wendell talked about, you know, the aftermath of Rita, and the thing that blew me away was in, in that the, those tough times right there, the first thing that was told to me uh, by, by him and, and a few others on the steering committee was, you know, Rita didn't do this to us. And I'm looking around going, well, I'm fairly certain she did. But, you know, they said, no, our seafood industry has been in decline for a long time. And what this storm has done is given us a, a little glimpse into where we are headed anyway. But now the federal government is here with a bunch of resources. 
and the federal government is coming in and they're saying, okay, what can we do to help? So we want to be prepared for when those opportunities um, show their face, we want to be ready to move. That perspective is not normal. That perspective is very, very different. At the same time that was happening in meetings regarding New Orleans, they were saying, you know, we're the canary in the coal mine. And they would use this and use this and use this, and I'm thinking, okay, good, you're the canary, but Vermillion Parish is the mining company, right? Vermillion Parish knows that something's gonna happen in the mine, but Vermillion Parish and Iberia Parish are gonna reopen. Right? They're going to make this better than it was before, and they're going to keep going. So that's kind of the groundwork of where this happened. Uh, working with Thomas Email back then as well, I mean, Thomas, you all know Thomas, I mean, on the ground every day, you know, working for the betterment of this community. And we had an opportunity to, to start to look, not at the, at the water um, or, or the fish, but to start looking at the businesses that worked on the water, right? And looking at our coastal communities. So we started three years ago. Um, by doing a study on, on Vermilion, Iberia, and St. Mary Parishes. And, you know, we went around, we interviewed a bunch of you all, so Ms. Cheryl was one of the folks that, that we interviewed, um, and listening to what are the opportunities um, that we have in front of the seafood industry. I um, mean, we took those lessons there, and then we were able to get additional funding, and we expanded our study out to the rest of coastal Louisiana, including Orleans Parish. And once again, this region leads. This region leads. Um, so some of the things that came up out of those studies is, one big one is, we've got to increase the value of our catch. We've got to increase, at, the, at you know, for our fishermen, we've got to figure out ways on how do we increase value. So Louisiana, by volume, is the number two producer of seafood in the country, but by value, we're the number four producer. And then when CARES Act money comes down, we actually get our number 14 share of the CARES Act money. We don't do a really good job of marketing and telling the world what the true value is of the product that we have here. Now we all know that we, we feel that it's higher quality than others, but people out there don't see it because we don't really communicate it very well. But what we're able to do through some of the work by, by people like Ms. Cheryl and Mr. Albert and by Vermilion Bay Suite, we start to connect that product back to the fishermen and back to the region where it comes from and that's what we see as really resonating with customers. Delta Seafood and Farmers Market, right? People get to meet the fishermen, right? And you start to see that connection and that really resonates. But some of the specific things that came up um, were things like transportation. So in this region, we don't have enough volume outside of Blue Point Crab. We don't have enough volume for a refrigerated trucking company that has a, a, a terminal in New Orleans to send a truck all the way over here to pick up because there's too many stops where they got to pick up a small amount of volume. So one of the things we said was if we had a place where small producers could come together to bring their goods, but in collectively we increase it and, call it and create larger volume, everybody still sells, up, sells their own thing. But if I have a larger, larger uh, volume to pick up, then those companies would make the trip over here. So that's one thing that came up about that. The second thing is that starts to create a catalyst now so somebody can bring a little bit, contribute a little bit to that one load, you know, every week, every month, whatever it might be, but then they also start growing their business. So we might be able to spur somebody to ultimately have um, larger volume. The other thing is workforce development. And where do we train people? Where do we talk? Where do we look at business practice? You know, so Thomas's group has done a lot on the, on the innovation side. Um, you know, how do we bring people in to, to get them to think about the seafood industry? So we need a space. We need a space to where we can demo and those kind of things. And Tom is going to tell you about some of the things he's doing, but this is going to work alongside of it. On the marketing and branding side, you know, it is tying these products, but also making these products available. So the fact that we have them is great, but we need to make them available to where they can reach customers out there. So Delta Direct Seafood, the leader, ultimately Louisiana Direct Seafood, right? So that part there of how do we then take it and scale? How do we then work to reach the masses? So we've been talking to a lot of folks out of, out of the Northwest that work in the salmon space and those kind of things about, you know, how do you create these channels to where you can sell large volumes of seafood at very, very high prices online? 
You know, what, is that, what does that model look like? Again, right now we're a small volume, so it, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult to get some of those products out. But the biggest thing that we, that I want to touch on tonight that um, I hope you appreciate is the collaboration that you all have between your industry and the economic development resources that you have um, here locally at the, at the town level with, with, with ERAP and Delcom, but also at the parish level, regional level, um, all the way on up. Um, the grant funding coming from federal agencies. So we did make a whole lot of friends um, in some places by saying that the seafood industry didn't have a voice at all tables, the way some other, some other industries do. Oil and gas has a natural end to state government with, with natural resources, right? You know, ag, Department of Ag, right? You know, farmers, Department of Ag, we've got a natural end. So what's the end road for the seafood industry? We don't really have a clear path into government. So some people would say, well, it's through the Seafood Promotion Board. Others say, well, there's part of it that should go to the Department of Ag. Well, go over to Economic Development. They're like, yeah, but our industry is a bunch of small businesses that have to work to figure out these pathways. And it makes it hard. So one of our recommendations was we need better alignment between Economic Development and the industry. And what's happening tonight shows you the leadership that you have here um, not just for your own parish, but also for our industry as a whole. So hats off to, to Wendell and his team, Mr. Mayor and, you know, uh, Mr. President, you know, in the work that they're doing to support the industry here. Because the only other parish, out of the 10 that we looked at, the only other parish that has started anything over the last couple of years specifically for the seafood industry is Jefferson Parish. They created a Fisherman's Fund loan program um, after the last hurricane. Um, so, so kudos to you all, congratulations. Um, we, we have a couple copies of, of the, the reports. I put them on the table back there if anybody would like a copy of them. Um, so, so thank you all. Thank you, Jeff. Mr. Thomas' email, we just met tonight. <laughs> Tom, uh, you know, became interested in what we were doing. We were having meetings in Delcom to try to figure out what can we do in Delcom. Um, and, and we, we latched on to the shrimpers because they were telling all our people, I cannot make it anymore. I cannot pay my fuel and ice with what I'm selling to the, to the dock. So we brought in uh, the fisheries uh, the Louisiana Sea Grant, he's our marine, at the time was our marine fisheries agent, and they are to fishermen what the Ag Center is to farmers. They, they have the research and they provide all the, the technology and the science to help them improve their business as well as anything having to do with the coast. So in, in the beginning, we started planning and, and doing different things, and it was all pie in the sky stuff until one uh, of the meetings, Tom came in with some papers and said, there's this federal grant, and it was written for us. And it was a 3.2 or $3.4 million at the time. To, we ended up building the boat launch, the pavilion, uh, at, which is now Bayou Carlin Cove. And ever since then, he's helped us with Delcom Direct. We, we broaden that to Louisiana Direct. Uh, we broaden it to Vermillion Bay Suite. And now we have Louisiana Direct Seafood Shop, where we're selling all these products across the country and we're shipping every week orders uh, from people who want Louisiana seafood. So without more accolades, Here's Mr. Thomas email. Thank you, Wendell. Uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm just so damn proud of what's happened here in this area with seafood, with uh, Wendell, with the port, with the community, and all the great things that have happened. I had no idea that when we started uh, that all this was going to unfold. Uh, Greg Tuchet was the uh, was on the original steering committee. We started thinking about what could Delcom be going forward, and and we tried and we looked and we waited. He said, "You know, we're not going to get nothing." Yeah, yeah. Look what's happened. You know, it's been one after another after another. I would say this: I work across the entire coast, 
and in some other states, and Delco is, now everybody knows about Delco, what's going on in Delco. Everything seems to start here in Delco, so we're really leading the pack. Uh, right now there's a project going on in Bayula Battery, a redevelopment of a port there, and they're basing their model on what happened here. So, so be proud of, of, of the leadership and, uh, and the port and all of that. So I want to tell you what we do. Uh, I work seafood. I work at statewide across the coast. I'm out of the University of LSU, LSU Ag Center in Sea Grant. So I'm a county agent, but I work with fisheries. And uh, I work with the Sea Grant program, which is uh, funded by NOAA, which gives us extra money to be able to do things in the coastal areas. So, I have a colleague out here, uh, Tu Bui, who is a marine agent, uh, also with us. Yeah, and she does a lot of great things. And then my colleague, uh, Ann Duga, who uh, keeps me out of jail, but she writes our, our grants. But so I direct the Louisiana Fisheries Forward Program, which was a training program for the commercial fishing industry, for fishermen, processors, distributors, uh, and I also manage another project called uh, Louisiana Direct Seafood, which is how we ended up doing uh, direct marketing, not only out of, out of Delco, but out of uh, 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 all across the whole coast. And so that would really kick that off and help, help save a lot of the commercial fishermen by getting, selling some or all of their product direct. So I want to go into uh, a little bit, just some show and tell about things that we've done that, mentioned, that uh, Wendell mentioned. So uh, direct marketing, Louisiana direct, direct seafood, that all happened right here. The stuff that's when you go to the mar market and buy off the boat, that all happened as a development project that happened right here. And the, and the, and the financial impact of that is immeasurable. Used to get some rough looking shrimp coming across the dock because fishermen didn't really know how to handle it or for the target market to be able to get that extra dollar or two for their product. Uh, but the handling of shrimp and, the, and you know, we moved a lot. We moved away from old black shrimp on ice, red heads and that kind of thing, to beautiful, pristine shrimp. And, and like Cheryl and them, they use a chilled water system now instead of ice, and it just breaks all the difference. And so we learned how to make money with our product. Then we got into microprocessing, so which is actually what's going to happen here. So we developed a whole range of brands. We worked with, uh, the, started with the Vermilion Bay Suite. But then others pack theirs, like their Cheryl's pack right there. And then Anna Marie, another pack down in, uh, in, in Montague. So a lot of these mom and pop processors, this is where innovation happens. Before we started branding and packing, you didn't see packs like this that could re be relatable back to a commercial fisherman. Big D back there, he's that tall guy in the back. His dream was to pack his black drum. He's a commercial fisherman. He catches a million pounds at his dock of black drum in a year. In a year. His dream was to be able to pack his own fish uh, and sell some of his fish direct to the customer. And, and, and that, that story is, I mean, he can't keep up. You know, he can't, he can't cut enough fish to keep up with the demand. If you go to Shucks and eat his uh, drum stacker, that's, that was his fish, so big D. So on and on and on. So, these kind of packages are what people want. The Vermilion Bay Sweet one pound, 2630, hand peeled, hand demand with no chemicals in it, that retails for around $20 a pound. And people, that's what they want. They come back for that. Yeah, they could go to Walmart and get something pumped up with 15% uh, water, sodium dry polyphosphate, but they like this stuff. And, and so there's the opportunity, going after markets that are more valuable. So it's all about it is all about small mom and pops. Look at all the different products up there. And it happens in small spaces. Cheryl's, Cheryl has a beautiful processing plant that she and her husband put together. It's pristine, it's clean. You go in there and you say, I, yeah, I want to buy stuff from here. There's a lot of processing plants. Douglas's processing plant is not big, it's a small place, but there's a lot that can happen in a small place. You pack that product, and we love frozen things. Vacuum packed, frozen, high quality. It keeps forever. You put it in inventory, and then you sell it later. You know, it's beautiful like that. So we do that. So, and there's companies all across the state that have done the same kind of thing. This is in St. Bernard. Oh, look here. That 
she is. It's Miss Cheryl with some of her patch years ago. Yeah. Oh, it's looking good then, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so there's equipment that you use to do this, and there's ways to do this, and, and we do the training on that sort of thing. And uh, and we, we go out and we market. There's Big D's Black Drum, or Baby May Sweet Peel Shrimp. I mean, these are these are valuable things that you you you. There are people willing to pay for good stuff, okay? And they pay for it, and they buy it. And they don't even look back. I mean, look what we're paying for crawfish right now, huh? If we were paying for Mickey Bay Sweet, we rolled that out. We had uh, that was our first creation. That was actually packed uh, at uh, Intracoastal City with two two uh, two buoys. Uh, uh, mother-in-law mother -in -law there uh, at, at their plant and that's how it all started and it hasn't stopped and it is still still rolling it was first marketed by Sean's back before when Sean had that little grocery store in Delcom and now he's got the big grocery store so that's how that happened you know we, we told the story we got grant money and we write grants we go out and get more money to do more projects and they love what we did and they give us more money that's like Wendell they think he's golden you know, we, we got with the media, we spent time, we got out there, we told the stories. We developed more, more brands, I mean, more under Vermilion Bay. We had shrimp and fish and crab and catfish and on and on and on. And there's all that, all of that. So this wasn't done before. You didn't see anything that looked pretty like that. Okay, so, so the black drum. I mean, I, I just, this is, this is one of the best products that you, you're going to, you can take this. This bag and vacuum bag. Cut it open after a year. Open it up. It smells like ocean water. Okay, it's just it's just perfect. So that was a great product. And then you take catfish. There's a cat, big catfish plant in uh, in Lauraville, and they were packing their product in uh, Ziploc bags. And then we took it and we put it in a with a label in a vacuum pack bag. You know, and then. We went from the, uh, it went from just a basic product to something that really looked nice. So there's techniques to do that you can do all. This. And so there's endless, endless, endless opportunities. Whole frozen crabs. You can freeze a crab, put him in a box, and sell that same crab a month later, and yet he's cooked, frozen, throw him in hot water, and he tastes just like a fresh crab. I don't know why he's doing it? I don't know why, but that, that's the thing that you can do. Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. You can do that. Oh, yeah. So, so at LSU, at LSU, so we're the technology people. We have a, a we have a technology people. That's who we're, we're actually ed educators. We work in uh, seafood processing. We have a, a seafood scientist and a staff of people uh, on campus that we work with. Dr. Evelyn Watts is our seafood specialist, and she's all over the state, everywhere, working with us on different projects. We put on trainings, conferences, and those kinds of things to help people learn how to develop. And we have equipment and all of that. So what we have now, a new facility that we're getting ready to open, this is not quite finished because the floors don't have epoxy, but we have a seafood processing demonstration laboratory that we're putting together right now at the Iberia Research Station, which is on the way to Generet, over there on the other side of the bayou. In that facility, we're going to have all the equipment that you would use in a basic processing plant, a grinder, a smoker, a vacuum pack machine, uh, you name it. We've got a brine freezer, plate, plate freezer, all these different gadgets that you could come and learn how to use. So. Our goal is to sort of be the training side of, of the project that's going to happen here. So if you want to, and we'll be putting trainings on and field days and showing how to do this and how to do that and how to vacuum pack and how to, how to put things up in such a way, how to, how to do a label, what's required on the label, what does the font size have to be, what's a QR code, those kinds of things. All of those things we'll be able to teach you to do. And so this is going to be opening uh, this year. It's it's almost it's really almost done except for the floors and then putting all the equipment and, and all in it. It's 1,500 square feet. Uh, it's 1,500 square feet, and it's going to be uh, a real treasure uh, teaching lab. We never had a place like this to do to do this kind of thing before because seafood's kind of nasty, 
And uh, we have uh, food hubs on campus at LSU, but they won't allow them to do seafood. So we can't out at the IP area station because the water runs out of there on their own pasture. So that's all good. So uh, we are going to have on July 19th at 10 a.m. a ribbon cutting and a, and a visit day where folks can come and see what we've got there. And so we invite you all to come and join us. So we're here to aid in the further development of, of the project here, and, uh, and we're here as resource folks, technical people to help you uh, in, in the food science end of things, the processing end of things, also with other aspects of like marketing and, and all of that. So those are the kind of things that we do and have done so far, and we learn as we go. So uh, if we don't know it, we, we jump off of a lot of cliffs and hold hands, and, and in the end, we, it seems to turn out okay. So. So, and so thank you all for, uh, for all coming tonight and supporting in support of the project and we're here as a university. This is how, this is how the university comes through the people is, is through our extension work. So glad to be here. Thanks, Tom. Uh, you know, we sell these products online and uh, Tom was talking about the black drum. We cannot keep black drum. I mean, we bug the heck out of Doug Doug, go fishing. But look, fishing, fishing is tough. And, and you can ask Miss Cheryl. Last year was just, just horrible. It's heartbreaking to see how bad the shrimping was last year. It's, it can't, it, it, it can't be like that every year. It, it, shrimping is a rough business. All kind of things that affect shrimp. So when things are good, we need to capitalize on it and hopefully uh, that's what this process will will help to do uh, but there's other you know like the catfish we can't keep that and it's been hard to, to get it early on in, in 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 the season crawfish we can't keep crawfish so these are people all across the country that want this product from California to New York to Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, we're getting them from all over. And so that just, we just think there's tremendous potential, not just uh, for seafood, but for all foods that are produced here in Good Baby Parish, Iberia Parish, and uh, we want to provide an outlet for all of that. So, um, just to just to let you know, the, the, we expect this project to cost, and we, we estimated at, at the high end, um, 1.8 million dollars. The USDA is chipping in 780 thousand dollars, and on, on this is on the Rise Grant. Um, we put this Rise Grant together, and uh, I. I when we started on, I thought it was going to be a, 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 a big grant. I mean, uh, you know, it's the USDA. I'm sure this is a nationwide grant, uh, nationwide competitive. So Suzanne started working on it. We put it together. And then as I was going through the materials, I go through it, and I see that it's only $10 million. $10 million doesn't go anywhere when it's nationwide. I'm like, we have no chance. There is no way. They are gonna give Delcom uh, $780,000. And I almost told them to pull it. Let's not do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth the trouble. But we didn't, we went through three quarters of the grant as it was. Okay, let's, let's finish it. Uh, but I'm not counting on it. And then when we got the message that we had it, uh, I almost fell on the floor. I did fall on the floor, let me put that. So, uh, so the USDA is going to chip in $708,000. The board is going to uh, match that amount. Uh, just yesterday, we it was announced, as I said earlier, that Delta Regional Authority is going to award us $275,000. This is going to be to purchase the property to elevate it and to do the engineering for the project. Uh, so we're looking at construction of one million and another 500,000 
in equipment. And again, these are just based on estimates. Um, you know, we, we will be looking at cost uh, on, on equipment, and, you know, because we just priced, this is all new equipment, and, uh, but, but just to give you an idea of where the money is allocated at, at this point. So this is uh, what it's going to look like. This is from Highway 14 towards the ballpark uh, next to the pediatric office. Uh, it will have a storefront, it will have a drive-through, and then you'll see that uh, right here, uh, the west side of the building is going to be on the edge of the property. And so what we want to do is be able to attach on to that building or uh, build right next to that building and, and start a more or less a strip mall. I hate saying strip mall because it's going to be businesses a little bit larger than what you usually see in a strip mall. But it's, it's the, the start of the development. So we built in growth and we've had some interest uh, going forward to, to be able to locate other, other businesses at that particular location. Um, the floor plans, uh, it's probably hard for you to see. Uh, over, over to the left side of the screen. Can y'all see that? Uh, that is the storefront with a counter for serving, then the back end uh, is storage, I think we have cold storage, walk-in freezer, a prep area in red, offices behind that, and storage, entry from the back with some temporary storage, a demo kitchen area, y'all can see right where those two right where the double doors are in the front right behind that those two tables and then on the bottom of the bottom wall is cooking and and cleaning so this is just preliminary and we have a lot of details to, to work out and we're gonna we're going to flex into into different arrangement depending on what you tell us that's why we're having it so we can know what the demand is and and what uh, we want to see in the final design um, we we also we want to have an ongoing business which is producing prepared foods with seafood you know gumbo, etouffee, all the traditional things, but we want to be able to sell those things online. And so that's another angle to be able to keep this facility um, going because uh, not all of these facilities, if you look at them across the country, are, are successful. So we, we want it to be self-sustaining. We don't want tax dollars to fund this. It has to be self-sustaining. Okay, next step, most important. We have distributed what's, what's called a letter of interest. Uh, you put your name and uh, basic information and then there's some check boxes on what, you're have, what you have a need or how this can serve your needs. So if you can fill that out tonight and leave it with our staff, uh, that's how we're, we're gonna of uh, survey the needs um, of going forward. So we're going to assess, you know, what exactly we want to do, how we want to arrange this. We're going to move towards completion of the final design. We're going to purchase and elevate the site. We're going to bid the construction, purchase equipment, enter an operating agreement, and then following up on that is an implementation grant by the USDA to help a lot of what's called soft cost marketing and, and things of that nature. Um, a lot of business costs so that uh, the, 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 the project will be successful. 
Uh, um, said about all I can say at, at this point. If you have any questions or you want to make any comments, you're welcome to do so. As I said, you're probably going to leave here with more questions than answers, but uh, we're just starting. The most important thing is Miss Evie has the checkbook, and we got the money. So we're something is going to happen. We're going to make this happen. Uh, but we need, this is a community project, it's for the benefit of the community and all the talented people in our area and all the producers. So, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free. Question. What does Clay Higgins have to do with this? He was the backer, right? I mean, he really worked it, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, I cannot thank Clay Higgins enough for not only we had other other projects as well, but he saw our project and did what it took to make sure that we got that money. And this is not the only project. And um, I also want to uh, thank Senator Cassidy as well on some other grants that we had. Both of those have been just tremendous in helping us and and both of them before we even started all of this or this whole process would call me and say what's going on with the port i never reached out to them at all and maybe maybe i should but that's just that's just not me to do that but they called us and wanted to know what just what's going on we want to know you know they didn't say what can we do for you they want to know what's going on and uh, through all of that, when, when these friends come across their desk, uh, believe me, they are going to make sure that, that the right thing happens. So we finally gonna get help. The fishermen, not just the shrimps, the crabbers, the fish the people. We've been getting help. I've been talking for years to get us some help. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am, you know what? Um, I'm very interested and I've been fighting 23 months of a pandemic trying to stay alive. Yeah. And um, I probably, um, I'm, I'm a big global pusher. Um, I'm not a big fan of the injected shrimp so to speak you know I, will, I, I buy my product from this area um i've tried several avenues trying to stay you know to keep the lights on i have a restaurant i was limited and when you know you take out the curbside i worked seven days a week I, I fell asleep at the tables when i was in capacity level it meant when i put on my lights it was 100 percent of the bills but only 25 percent of my income I'm fighting that, you know, I have no staff. I'm competing with a government I, that I can't compete with. And I've, I've, I've gone through every avenue, and I'm so excited that this is coming because the closest thing I could find was in Bell something. I, I, I don't even know. I, I knew I was going to get lost getting there, but they were going to require me doing 300 gallons of product, which meant where was I going to put it? Can I sell 300 gallons? And then I went to a shipping facility. They actually closed down before I got my product back. So I'm sure they're eating well. Um, but one thing that I think could help this, and I, I really want to learn more, but the one thing I learned through every failed door was maybe I could vacuum seal it myself. But the biggest, the biggest hurdle was shipping it at a reasonable price. If we could get a shipping, um, a, a, like if, if, we, if we here, and we ship from here, we get that discount. I can sell my product, but an $80 ship, an $80 worth of food is costing me 150 to yeah. ship it, where if I could ship it for 30, I could, I could make up for the, the tables I don't get to turn because I don't have enough staff. I'm just trying to stay alive. That is, really important with this if you can get a deal with FedEx, UPS, I don't care who, 
it can be a little yellow truck that a little bus, I don't care, but if you could ship our product, we could show the United States that this area is the best seafood place. And, and the, you know, there's a lot of things that, that, that we have in Kermit that's involved in shipping is huge. The cost, you, you cannot sell your product and lose money. Uh, so how are you going to get the consumer to, to pay for shipping? They don't want to pay shipping. Yes, you have. If we have a, a commercial contract, if we have a like if we yeah. the person I was trying to ship my food through, I was trying to use the only reason I wanted to to go through her, and it wasn't going to be my best deal, was because she shipped so much food. I was going to piggyback on her FedEx yeah. account number. That's all I wanted, and then she ended up having to close down. Yeah, and you when you get into volume, and we've talked about different ways to address shipping. When you get to volume, that's when you start to get better rates. Yes. Uh, the other thing is that is to ship to fulfillment centers, but those fulfillment centers, like you're saying, they want a tremendous amount of volume each month. So those, you know, this is going to help with that. Thank you. Doug. Okay, are y'all going to be able to have some extra freezer capacity? It's already on the So you're ready to go to work. Well, I'm serious because so, uh, I've got 13 freezers and they always filled up and i got to shovel paint around and food around. So yeah, so when, when you saw the original layout, that, that was the original design. And before, you know, we wrapped that head around this project and, and listened to stories like this, um, I think our retail storefront is going to be Small, small, enough, right? And then we want to accommodate all these people to be in the back cooking. We want storage space, so we want a ton of space. So that's the feedback we need. But also, too, a hurricane was getting ready to approach the coastline, which has been doing every year like that. And some of these docks have got thousands and thousands and thousands of people. We're going to have a backup generator and we're going to be at elevation. Correct. That's what we need, like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got it. That's, a issue. You that's know, right. I'm not put stuff on trucks and so this will be all, all your all your questions, all your concerns. Voice them on these on on these papers, so we we know a lot of these things that it, we think of, but we need it from the experts. Um, so we talked a lot about seafood. I see some bakers in here that and and different products, different lines. Um, we want to know what you need also. We, we need to know if you want to go ahead. Go ahead and talk. Um, I, I have a boudin. I have a boudin dip and a boudin queso that we make. And um, I, my business partner is in Shreveport. I'm in I'm in Lafayette. We're actually in a commercial commissary kitchen up in Shreveport. We would love to have something like a wholesale kitchen where we can fall under the Department of Ag because we are we have people that want us to ship. The first time we sold the product, can you ship it to Washington? Can you ship it to Florida? I went yesterday. You're you're shipping. Your your comment about the the lady's comment about the shipping. She's absolutely correct. I went to ship one of our half pans. It's 32 ounces of boudin dip, frozen because we make that at Take and Make and we freeze it. That was going to cost 115 dollars to ship from Pompano, Florida. So it's uh, it's crazy. We business can't grow. They need to learn how, like other businesses, I, I applaud y'all for the seafood. I, I understand that. But the meat and the other products, we need Department of Ag to come in and make sure that it, the kitchen is approved because we were told we have to be in our own kitchen. You know, so I don't know if they can make a, a commissary like wholesale kitchen, but in order to go wholesale, we have to be under the Department of Ag. So, you know, things like that and like he said that the storage space, that's key right there. So, and, and you talk about packaging. We need to know what you need to package your product. We need to know if you need a sealer mill. We need to know if you need a labeling machine. We need to know every little detail. If you don't have enough room on it, right on the back, right when those email down, send them an email. Everything you need for your product. Yes, I have pictures too. Perfect. That's what we need. That's what we need. Yes, sir. After COVID-19, probably 50% of my customers are starting to call 
over the phone for me to ship the products to them. You know, so it's a new era in the seafood business. That's right. You know, so the shipping thing is something that we need to be focusing on more than anything right now. In the yeah. And you know, when we build this product, we create a lot of jobs. We create a lot of opportunities for local people to have a place to make a dollar off of somebody else far away. As a local, I call myself a politician, but I'm not. But as a local public leader. Uh, I want more sales tax for my community. Unfortunately, a lot of these things I won't gain sales tax for, no problem. But when you look at the miles we're gonna feed with this with this commissary kitchen of the people coming in and making a product, it's tremendous for the community. Uh, right here. Yeah, I was just gonna say about the shipping thing. I uh, I produce uh, grass-fed beef and I've uh, been doing it for a good while around here. And uh, I've looked into shipping a lot. Right before COVID, I was actually going to try to launch a shipping program. One of the biggest problems is not necessarily the cost of shipping. If you get the right packaging, you can ship something ground three days and it'll stay. It'll stay good. The problem is you have to buy it in bulk, or else it's really expensive. It'll be for a ten by ten by ten box. It'll be about ten to twelve dollars for the for the insulation and the box. Uh, and so, but if you can buy that in an 18 wheeler load, it cuts the, uh, the cost to about a half to a quarter of that. So if you could get a group, like she was saying, like if you can get a group of people together, like a shipping conglomerate or whatever you want to call it, and, and make a bulk purchase it, and if there would be a, a place to store that much material, then it would make it so much easier for everybody else. Yes, that's it. Yes, sir.
on the north side of Highway 14, thanks to Twin Parish Courts. USDA is funding a, a sewage project on the Skip and Rhea side, another $150,000 that we're about to have happen. And then we're going to send sewage all the way to the grub lot. So we have the infrastructure. Everything's falling in place. We just, we need these warm bodies to have a place to go. Any more questions? Oh, I thought I had um, You know, uh, I know Wendell won't necessarily come out and say it, so I'll say it. Um, just because your idea doesn't make it into this seafood hub doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And I think earlier we said, you know, once you get the money, they love to give you more money because you can demonstrate that you can use it wisely. So please put your ideas down because then if we have all these ideas, we can go back to some of these funding sources and say like, look, this is going to solve a third of the problems. Now help us solve the rest. So please be honest, give us that information. You know, I think all of these partners, especially the funding ones, are so excited to see these things happen and what can happen when they invest in this community. So just please be honest and share that information with us. Um, and it's not anything crazy official, but it'll help secure more funding for down the line. Um, one more question. Will y'all have like assistance for people to learn how to start their businesses and get them off the ground because that's something that we had to learn in a, in the food and business you had to uh, we had to go spend six hours with the department of ag in baton rouge loved it it became very educated but we've been promised at our commissary kitchen in shreveport that they're going to help us grow because they're through southern and they haven't helped they really haven't helped us do anything so I love to see South Louisiana have something to help these businesses learn how to go to the next step because it's it's frustrating you get very discouraged when you think you're doing something great and then you find out you get knocked down like three pegs so education would be great too. That's, that's the easiest thing we've got the demo kitchen and classroom absolutely and listen so and a big part of it is we don't you know Maybe there won't be these certain little grants in the future, but this Twin Parish Courts that we locals pay up a property tax for, they support us a lot. They support us tremendously. So they will continue to support us here. We love to hear, I hate to see crawfish being sold in Shreveport. I hate it. It's oh, crazy. They pay in Mormon, it needs to be sold in South Louisiana. You know, yeah. I, it, it bothers me. So we want to be the place they order their yeah. food, South yeah. Louisiana. And, and we have, some very good customers from North Louisiana. They love the seafood from down here. Absolutely. Miss Cheryl. So, Ms. Ann, I know you working on the shipping thing. But I hate to give all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to help y'all in the meantime until she gets this thing on. So, I ship. They their special needs and They ship. And they ship for. Mr. Wendell never asked me to, right? Yes. And this, no. Okay. It, it is, it, it's not as much as you do. You're shipping, because that's, you know, if y'all are shipping a lot, you get a better rate. I'm not shipping that much. They're shipping it. Compared to me, it's, it's. No, no. I had a girl order $100 worth of food, and her, it, it cost me $130 to ship it to her. Where? Who you use? Um, that one, I think, was shipping, et cetera. And that was my cheapest route, and it was going to So, So I think what she's saying is that a retail shipper versus a commercial shipper are going to be completely different. Right, but I mean, I'm going from place to place to place. Right, to place she, to place, he, and that's all I can they get. ship their meat across the world. Oh, I've got to say, hey, I'll feed you food if you let me use your FedEx money. I'm, well, I'm going to work it. They do, they, <laughs> they do allow for people to do that. Now, there's a charge associated with it, but they do... We're, we're talking about replicating that model. You know, is there an additional business that can start specifically to ship food and, and again, coordinate with everybody involved so that it makes your prices more comparable than somebody that they might have to, you know, they use closer to home? I, I can't even activate it on my website because 
time my shipping's more than my food. But before right. I heard of this meeting, which was a, a couple of days ago, because it was Janet, I was literally going to go door to door to anybody selling food in or uh, sausage. I don't care. I'll feed you if I can use your number. That's where I was going. Uh, I get I'm it. just going to vacuum it out my house. I don't care. And I'm going to feed you something. I was going to do it. Yeah. yeah. That's what she's talking about. She yeah. uses a pair. I do not shake She uses a pair. Two cases, two little boxes. Right. Oh, but I need someone that ships because she's loaded. That's what I mean. They do. They do. You're borrowing their shipping capabilities. Or buying. And, and remember, it's, it's not just shipping. But getting your products in grocery stores, yeah. getting your product to restaurants. Well, I've got two stores, three stores, really to put my stuff out. But every commissary kitchen I went to to try to make it wanted me to cook into 300 gallons of gumbo. I, how about if it doesn't work out? What the hell am I going to do? I'm going to be on a truck on the side of the road selling gumbo. <laughs> so I want to just take baby steps and not overdo myself. Hey. But I, I like that's, that's why this is happening. And the, the, the thing is that we want to help you get started so that you can become the next Miss Cheryl. We want you to be able to invest in your own facility and grow your business that way. And this is a, a stepping stone. And we want you to build it here. <laughs> I'm trying to take it to another level. I'm exactly. fine. Yep. So I'm this the oldest restaurant in the area, and that's, I'm just, I just think when I go to the store and I see names in the store, I'm thinking, why isn't the oldest place? Why isn't my name? Not my name, but my name. Well, my, my place. If it's the oldest place in that Indiana, I should be in a store somewhere, but I can't even know when they got on the gumbo and hope I don't Thank you. Who are what's, you? Your yeah, what's your restaurant? Yeah, what's your restaurant? Riverside. Riverside. Alright, cool. Oh, no. So I'm just trying to grab oh, yeah. it. I'm not trying to, I don't want the whole pie. I just want to look at the pie. It's all up on. I just want to shit myself. She's all these people that say, oh my God, I used to go there and I miss it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I can't shit it to you. And, and guess what else too? There's a great spot right across the way that would be perfect for your second location i mean we're committed i mean this is this has been a long process and the people in this room are committed to helping you get what you need because you are right we should be telling the world about your business so why not why not make it at this commissary kitchen and exactly we are so good and we supply to, we're one of the biggest suppliers in, in the United States. Everybody should be wanting to eat our seafood, yeah. but we don't have an avenue to get it. Because I'm, I'm just a fool boy, really. I'm just, you know. <laughs> 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 I was going to feed somebody. So now, I'm now look, what's, what's important when you leave is not only to leave your letter of interest, but to bring some copies with you and distribute it to other businesses who you might think has an interest in this. Okay, so we can grow and have the, the best chance of, of success. When, Any when, other? I, I want to say something. Uh, so there, there's been a couple questions about growth in your business and helping your business grow. So at UL, I have a Center for Entrepreneurship and Economic Development that focuses solely on the business side. So I mean, it could be any, any type of business that's out there. But if any of you are looking for someone to sit with, to, to help with a business plan or whatever it might be, please let me know. Um, you know stay out there and then I'm happy to give you my contact information because we can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we just did a small business program in Vermilion Parish, um, wrapped up yesterday, um, called Accelerate Vermilion. Um, we did, it was three weeks long on, on Wednesdays, um, you know, from 9 to 3 o'clock. Um, you know, so we just kind of covered the waterfront, so to speak, of different topics. But if you need some help with, on the business side, please let me know. We're happy to help you. Um, and also, there, there's, there's grants, the same kind of grants and those kind of things that Wiggle's talking about here. 
USDA has value-added producer grants and all these kind of things that are out there as well that you as a small business could apply for as well. So I'm happy to help. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let y'all know, in case y'all didn't know, Congressman Higgins has a deep seated love for the small businessman and the small businesswoman. He understands the problems with the shrimping and crawfish. All the things that y'all go through, we understand it. I hear a lot of talk about grants and USDA. We have a direct line with the USDA. Any grant that y'all write, before you turn it in, please call the office and we will write you a congressional letter of support to go with the package. A lot of times, that puts us in the pile of So we've been working with USDA since Congressman Higgins first became a congressman and we've kind of got us a little system. So please reach in. I know you're a grant lady. I'm going to give you a card on my way out. But please reach in. And we're going to do everything we can. We understand. I don't know if y'all got the H2A, H2B issue over here. We're all over that as well. We understand that these, these workers are needed. And it's not taking jobs away from the United States citizens because they don't want to do those jobs. Correct. The, the shrimpers and the crawfishermen and the rice farmers need these workers. It's, it's, a, it's a detriment to us if we don't have them because y'all are feeding us. Y'all are feeding everybody. So just know that our office, the Congressman Higgins, has your back. And if you need something, give us a call. If we don't know how to help you, we're going to investigate and we're going to find out how to help you. I promise you. Okay? Thank you, John. Okay, guys, it's getting to my bedtime. <laughs> Look, write down my phone number, write down my email address, send your questions to me, and we'll follow up. Thank y'all for coming out. And remember, we want to take Cajun flavor and turn it into Cajun value.